Hello and welcome to our Bro Deck Breakdowns. My name is Ian from ENCCG and we'll be taking a good look at all of the 24 decks that managed to top in the recent Bush Road Rumble online. Since such a big part of it is Data Life, we'll dedicate this episode to Data Life and its deck space. Here's a collection of all 36 cards that every 8 standby player was playing. This leaves 14 tech spots to include whatever they thought was correct in the current meta. Starting off with the 2-2s. Two Level 2 Toka is amazing for setting up cancels in combination with the level 1 Toka. However, with recent additions of level 2 killers such as the level 1 Miyuki and the level 1 Winter, level 2 Kurumi tends to be the more stable way to get your game plan going. Vince and Mark took this exact same decklist and ended up with a split of 3 Kurumi for consistency and 1 Toka for the good matchups. Another noteworthy part is their backups. Since it's an open decklist tournament, the opponents can see if it's safe to attack if you don't run backups. They included a 1-0 backup, which can deter a level 1 Ruby or Kaguya combo by just being in the decklist, and additionally, they played a level 1 Yoshino backup to threaten opposing standby decks with its very costly anti-change ability. They also added a level 0 Kurumi for the standby matchups, which can side into one big body and potentially pump over another big body. And finally, they included a level 0 Kurumi Riki. Usually this kind of profile is especially good when you have a level 1 combo to search, but in this case, it is probably included because good players tend to deny Data Life player from leveling to prevent their power spikes. This Kurumi saves you in those spots, and just by being in the deck deters the opponents from making those plays. Darcy had a very similar take on the deck, but didn't see as much value in the 2 Toka and the 1-0 backup, and preferred a little bit of extra consistency. Kisa only played 3 copies of the level 2 Toka, but compensated for it by adding an additional copy of the 1-1 Yoshino to save it whenever it gets threatened, and the level 0 Kotori to prepare the waiting room for standby targets. He also played 2 of the Yoshino counter to not only threaten the anti-change, but also have it available most of the times, and finish his build off with a 3-5 Toka counter for the cases where 2-5 isn't enough. Pekoa had a very similar approach, but ran a mix of level 1 backups, as well as some more healers to extend the game a little bit more. And now we're getting to the more spicy techs. Tangjiro played 4 copies of the anti-runner Kurumi, which is a natural enemy of the K-runner, but also has enough power to lock 1-1 Yoshinos that are on front row for the Dell players that want to save their 2 Tokas that way. Varga opted to run My Little Shido which can help breaking walls like 2-2 Geld and 2-2 Toka in standby matchups. And even though most 2-2 standby targets can be encored, simply removing something like a 1-1 Yoshino, a 1-1 Kaguya, or some level 3s can already be really backbreaking. Additionally, they played the 2-1 Memory Counter, which can deny some finishers such as the level 3 Rimuru or the level 3 Finn and Jake combo. And finally, Albert decided to play the level 3 Basic Realizer event, which is great to seal the deal when you're winning board, but could also present some awkward moments with it being the fourth color in your deck. And that's it for the 9 different 8 standby decks, but we still have one more deck to go. Samuel played 5 standby 3 choice, a deck that basically tries to fulfill the same wall in game plan as 8 standby, but also has the cutlery combo to fall back onto for whenever he loses board. This deck has a bit easier access to my little Shido as well to disrupt the board. I placed the 1-1 Origami purely for the 3k boost to get to beat over big standby walls. A final thing to notice is that they valued the memory compression of the Sawa over the blink of the Shido, which helps out with cancelling in a matchup where they do lose board. And that's it for today. Next time we'll be covering the topping Ruby, Kaguya and Slime deck, so make sure to like and subscribe to get notified for the next episode of Burrow Deck Breakdowns. See you then!